You're listening to Speak Your Peace, a podcast about social determinants of health. I am your host, Dr. Damien Kelly. Hey, everybody, what's up? This is Dr. Kelly. Hope you're doing well. It is when you're hearing this will be 2024. So we are on the other side of it. I hope your year is going off to a great start. If you're hitting those New Year resolutions, going to the gym, all that kind of fun stuff. God bless. Make it a fun year. It's going to be interesting for us. But guess what, guys? No guest this week. So it's just me. So if you've ever asked, you know, how come I don't speak that much in podcast space? Well, guess what? You have your wish come true. It's all me today. So... This episode is really just going to be about some of the things I've learned or some of the fun things I've gleaned from people that I've got to speak to. I've got to speak to so many interesting and talented and highly educated people this year. So it's been very interesting just for me, just hearing these stories. And keep in mind, I never anticipated being a host of a podcast, let alone a podcast for a university so, hey, it's a great privilege. It's an honor to do this. So I always try to keep that in mind. But sometimes I'm listening to people. I'm like, wow, how, how did I get here? How did this happen? So we'll see what's what. We have some really cool stuff coming up in 2024. But before I ramble on too much, I will actually just kind of share with you guys some things. You know, I had some fun meeting and talking with people, hearing their stories again. Some stuff, we have time limits. So some stuff made the cutting room floor. Maybe one day I'll do like a, it's one of those reels where you're just doing just excerpts and stuff like that. So you can kind of hear people either behind the scenes or conversations that kind of got too long. So we had to kind of edit them out. But I think we captured the spirit of what people were trying to come across. So, so far, we've been able to air 10 episodes and getting people to listen to be, people who became, you know, activists or scientists or pastors and rabbis you know it's it's interesting their stories and everyone kind of has a a different path in getting there you know so a a few of our guests like rain eaton or pastor deckard you know they are kind of those outliers that you know they they pretty much came out of the womb as activists they came ready to work and to do their thing but you know other people kind of took a different path you know i took a different path to getting here so when i hear people's stories of how they got to be where they are i'm just so fascinated by that you know when i was listening to miss cleo and she was talking about you know her kind of growing up with mickey leland and you know she got to rub shoulders with some of those influential people here in Houston, Texas, and she knew them before and after they kind of hit a certain level of notoriety. I just kind of thought like she had that kind of Forrest Gump type of life where you know you were just born in, in the right time, in the right space, and you got to be a part of all these different monumental events. I mean, you I, the stuff that she lived through is going to go down in some of the history books. But she was there and she actually got to kind of witness it firsthand, which is really, really cool. But, you know, hey, I mean, she got, I think she got lucky, but maybe it wasn't luck. You know, maybe she just took advantage of some of the opportunities that were available to her. So I'll kind of leave that for you guys to decide, which, you know, again, she was such a great, great guest. I really enjoyed my time just kind of speaking with her. We also had, what, let's see, one of my favorite ones actually was Mike Flores. And, you know, he was the one, he was a former soldier. He works now in the school district. He works, you know, helping people overcome their addiction issues, drug and alcohol mostly. But yeah, she, he was definitely one of my favorite guests from 2023. You know, that, I mean, dude, that cat has really a beautiful spirit. He's an intellectual at heart, but he really has a heart of a service person who, who loves and cares about the different community, even, again, people he never met, he will automatically care about your well-being. So that really came off when you're kind of talking to him. And, I mean, just a little guilty pleasure myself. Dude, I've had friends and families who serve in the military. And for some reason, once they start telling stories 
I am all ears, dude. I am planning myself there and I'm listening to whatever comes up because they have some of the best stories. And it's again, it's not just servicemen. It's anyone who does social services. So if you're a serviceman, if you're a cop, if you're a teacher, uh, social services, you are a social worker, EMS, firefighter, you know, all those all those folk will have some of the most interesting stories you've ever heard. I would tell anyone if you're at a party and they start talking, plant yourself there, start listening, get ready to laugh, get ready to cry. It is they have all kinds of things. And it's it's almost like these people have lived multiple lifetimes. So uh, I've done 16 years in social services. So. Sometimes I will <laughs> tell a story or two at a party or around people and because ev- I'm at an age now where everything reminds me of something else or something I've, I've already kind of gone through or a story I've heard or something I've, I've kind of lived through. So so people are you know genuinely fascinated sometimes with the stories I tell, but I know that, hey, if you spent 10 years or more in any capacity in social services, you're, you're going to have tons of stories also. So my stories are nothing ex- extraordinary. I'll put it that way. So, but yeah, Mike was great. I hope to maybe have him back on in 2024. Again, so he, there are so many more stories he wants to tell, and I'm sure he's going to do a great job with that also. So, uh, But two of my most favorite guests, I would say, also were... Dr. Carmack and Rain. I hope to have them on again. We'll see. I hope I'll get to have more repeat guests. You know, it's all about timing and working within people's schedules. So everyone's really busy. So, but yeah, I love to have them back. They were both very fun. And my favorite thing about listening and recording them was really being able to tell them a joke or make them laugh. Because they both have these laughs that are just infectious. It, it really just fills your heart with joy, just hearing them laugh. So sometimes if you, if, if you go back and listen to some of those podcasts and I'm purposely being you know juvenile in some of my humor, it's because, dude, I love hearing them laugh. It, it brought so much joy to my heart to, to do that. So Rain, her having a background in music, like a few other guests, actually. So it... it My theory on that is a lot of the guests we've had, a lot of people we've spoken to, some of them have a background in either theater or music or some sort of performance art. So I think it really does help when you're standing in a room doing a speech or presentation, you're giving a lecture, what have you. I mean, at the end of the day, you're you're on stage. So those skills, I really do think, translate over. So Dr. Carmack, excuse me, with her, the things she's doing when it comes to cervical cancer, she's writing, you know, short plays and little skits to kind of help disseminate the need for medical screenings when it comes to, you know, taking your medication. If, you know, you may, may be or, or are HIV positive, uh, things kind of in that realm, which I think is just great. I, I love to see the finished product, you know, help. You know, Big Pharma's been doing commercials for years, so it's cool to have some scientists, you know, take a couple swings at bat, if you will. So I look forward to really hearing and seeing that finished product. And who, dude, you heard it on there. She said she's going to put me in them. So (laughs) we'll see if that actually happens. I just want to be a background character. Just kind of just, you know, just showed up in the background, just maybe sipping coffee or something like that. That way I can just say, hey, look, that's me. I was in her, you know, her play or I was in her little short infomercial. So. Oh, well. so a, a question I got and I've got it from a couple people, but my dad asked me this. So I thought I'd throw this in here for him. He asked me, who, who was I most nervous about interviewing? And hands down, I would say when I interviewed Dr. Obasi, who is my boss here at the health RCMI. And again, great guy. It's just you're interviewing your boss. So uh, so I hope it didn't show up in my voice if you go back and listen to it. But if you've ever had to record an interview with you and your employer before, it, it is interesting. It's, I, I guess, awkward would be the best I can I kind of sum it up with. You know? And, you know, for those who don't know, you know, he's, he's head of the department. You know, he's done some great things. He is one of the founding people here for the, uh, the Research Institute here, which is a standalone institution. So he's one of those founding people like, wow, 
and I'm I'm talking to him. And I'm like, man, I I just got here. I'm I'm here maybe a year and a half at the time of the interview. So, and the, you know, the whole time I'm thinking, okay, we're gonna get like two questions in, and he's gonna say. Am I paying this chucklehead to do this? Why? Why am I? Why am I talking to this guy? <laughs> what is he doing here? So he's gonna be like, you know, get the hell out of here. You know, I don't... <laughs> go do some science. What are you doing? So, but no, he was a really good sport. He was a, a really fun person to interview. You know, I, I did get nervous at first, but I, I kind of right around like the last, the second to last question, I did kind of my nerves did kind of settle. But you know, the whole time, you know, I'm thinking, you know. Can I can I joke with him? You know, can can I push back on some of the things he's saying? You know, I mean, the I think one of the scariest things I thought was, you know, Jesus, you know, what if he asked me a question? <laughs> How am I gonna answer it? But you know, it, it really worked out really well. So uh, the episode came out really good. So I hope you guys like it. If you can, go ahead, you know, give it a like, all that kind of stuff. So lastly, in the space of episodes we've already aired the last things we were doing were we um, some of you may have caught the theme but we really did a lot talking with people who operate in the in the space of faith and that was really how faith intersects with social determinants of health and as a person of faith you know as i am a person of faith but it was great to talk to you know different faith leaders and the concerns of their congregation so, you know, you have Rabbi Dan trying to serve his community in the very turbulent times we're living in. And he had some very poignant points about forgiveness and and trying to understand even if the things they're saying are not necessarily sacred to you, but you're understanding that this is a sacred text to other people. So you're, you're holding it in high regard, even though it, you don't, it doesn't have to be true for you, but you acknowledge that it's true for other people. So I, I really enjoyed his take on that one. He's actually, I think, one of the most, one of my favorite people to actually say my name. So if you go back, if you get a chance to listen to that episode, Rabbi, <laughs> Rabbi Dan, the way he would say, well, Damien, in, in Damien, let's, let's, I like, I like what you're saying now, Damien. Uh, he had such a, a calming voice, I thought, which, you know, if you've gotten to talk with, you know, people in that faith and in that realm, it's, 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 it's fascinating to hear their perspectives on certain things. And again, he was a really great guest. I really enjoyed my time with him. So uh, hopefully, I mean, if he wants to come back, we'd love to have him back on. I know we're trying to, ex if we do another series on faith, We'll probably try to expand to other faiths. So we're trying to work with maybe an Amman or a Buddhist monk or uh, things like that. So if you know anybody who's interested, please them our way. Again, we're not trying to push any religion on anyone or nothing nothing of the sort. It's just I'm, I'm just deeply fascinated with how faith touches so many different things. So when we talk with Pastor Deckard and every time, you know, he, we like we talk. When I talk to him, there's some sort of funeral happening happening at his church because, unfortunately, it's another young black male who has been shot. And I, I really got to kind of sit in that space with him and hear his perspective on how he deals with that. Those are the concerns of his congregation, even though his congregation is, you know, the 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 neighborhood they're in is you know is it's slowly rising economically speaking but there still is a level of crime that they they all have to kind of live with and deal with and how does he compartmentalize that how does he you know spend time with you know, those grieving parents relatives friends who are looking for some sort of retaliation you know how do you operate in that space more importantly dude how do you Again, do it day in, day out and not have that wear on you and not have that be something that stretches you out. So, again, I, I, I love looking at his answers and a lot of stuff. He came from a, a very faith based perspective, but he, he was he's really interesting guy. To, if you get a chance to check out his church and stuff, please do. But, yeah, he's a very interesting guy and he operates in a in a in a, in a realm which is it's very needed. But uh, again, 
some of the things this congregation is going through is very different than what the congregation of Rabbi Dan's passion is going through. Or for that matter, Pastor Diane, who was uh, one of the last people we spoke to this year and another person of faith. She is the pastor there. She is hilarious. I will, I am pleased, or I think it's funny that the only person who's ever cursed <laughs> on the podcast was Pastor Diane. So, Pastor Diane, if you're listening to it, I, I think you're hilarious. So, I can I will talk I can talk to you any day, every day, and never get bored. So, but the the issues that her congregation are, are facing, you know, being the pastor of an LGBTQ church, and you know the congregation how they're working in the space of transitioning from who they were assigned at birth to who they are or feel they are now and the different concerns they have when it comes to the medical community or when it comes to politicians passing certain laws or and again and I, I, when people always ask me uh how come I don't I don't really give a lot of pushback too much on on the podcast I really want people to have their space and what I like about what we do here is that or I'll give you a better example. So when I'm listening to other podcasts or other YouTube uh, ep- uh, episodes and stuff and people are having conversations, it's rare that a person gets to finish their thought. Usually about five to eight words in, someone's cutting them off or interjecting. So I, when we chose the title of the show, Speak Your Pieces, it really was that. We want people to be able to speak and put their input in there and have a full form thought and not interrupt them every time they're trying to speak. So again, Pastor Diane was really hilarious, but, and I understand, you know, not everyone agrees with what she does or, you know, some of her politics. So, and believe me, I can tell because the amount of views on her episode is not the same as some of the others. So being, just being able to operate in that space is very difficult, but I will try to say, Again, the whole point of this is trying to give people a chance to speak, people a chance to kind of hear their say. So if you can give that person a chance to let them kind of have their say, and again, it may not change your opinion, but at least you'll be able to better understand their perspective. And if you're uh, able to do that, you're allowing yourself to be challenged which I think is very hard in this time and age where we are allowing ourselves an opportunity to have, to listen to a person who has not a contrarian opinion, but uh, an opinion that may contradict how we were raised, how we were taught, or just opinions we may have had about other communities. So if you get a chance, give it a listen to (laughs) <laughs> again, she was really fun. I hope we get to, again, to bring her back. I'm looking also for some new guests as well. So we'll be doing that this year. The next segment I believe we're going to be doing is going to be on education. So I'm really excited about that one. We're going to be talking with different people who, in one aspect or another, touch education. So they're either working in or teaching in low-income communities we have a lobbyist who lobbies for educators and teachers. We have, you know, people who may be administrators or principals. And we're, I'm really fascinated about how that intersects with social terms of health, especially in the times we're living in, how the things that are happening outside the classroom are really having an impact in the classroom. So uh, I hope that you enjoyed those episodes I'll be rolling out shortly. We I've already recorded our first guest in that space, so hopefully those will be coming out pretty, pretty soon. So so uh, this is just me kind of, you know, just giving a wrap up on some of the things we've talked about, some things we've learned and some things I've kind of taken away. So, hey, if you have us on and thanks to everyone who's been listening, we do appreciate that. Thank you for sticking with us as we are trying to figure out this space. How do we do this? What is this actually going to look like? We were maybe, even, I mean, we had you know SOPs and all that kind of stuff, but we were maybe three to four episodes in when we're trying 
as as we were trying to figure out, well, what does this mean to do this? What does it kind of look like? So in some aspects, we're still trying to figure this out. But I think we have touched on a couple different things that people have found interesting. And, you know, we've gotten some really positive feedback. So I think we're on the right track. So we look forward to this space kind of growing and seeing what's going to happen for us in, in the in the year to come. So we appreciate all you guys for listening to us, for subscribing, giving us the like button, all that kind of fun stuff. And even, hey, even if we're in the background while you're doing the dishes, I appreciate that also. So thank you guys so much. I will be seeing you guys in 2024. God bless and do good things. Bye. Thanks for listening to our latest episode. If you like the content and want to help us grow, Do me a favor, like, share, and subscribe to the Health RCMI channel. Also, tell a friend. Special thanks to our producer, Allison Medley, and as always, our fearless leader, Dr. Esmenario Bossi. I am your host, Dr. Damien Kelly, leaving you with one simple message. Do good things.